My cordless vacuum cleaner has been sitting dead for almost a year now, and in this video I'll be giving it a new life. The battery inside the vacuum died after only one and a half years of using it, and the replacements were almost impossible to find. With 15 bucks worth of parts from AliExpress and just a few hours of tinkering, I finally got it working again. Since this process applies to all similar battery power tools and appliances, in this video I'll be showing you how I fixed it and how you can do the same. But before we begin, a quick word from today's video sponsor. Big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. PCBWay is known for their high-end PCB prototyping services, but recently they expanded with 3D printing and CNC milling too. 3D printing is the most interesting service to me personally, and the really cool thing is that they can not only 3D print plastic, but also aluminium, stainless steel and even titanium, which is just on another level. To get your quote instantly, upload your CAD files and select your settings. You can double check your file in the 3D viewer, and when you're ready to order, make sure to click the first link in the description under this video. It is the Xiaomi Mi handheld battery powered vacuum cleaner and it is of course a cheap alternative to something like a Dyson. Since I'm always working on various projects my workspace gets messy very quickly and so this small vacuum cleaner was a huge help. The price was great and it worked really well but sadly after only around a year and a half of using it the battery lost almost all of its capacity. By the end the battery would last for 5 minutes tops and eventually needed replacing. Battery replacements were impossible to find at the time and since I avoided my warranty by taking it Part, I had to fix it myself. In such situations where the battery is acting strange, it is usually a simple fix, and for us tinkerers, that means replacing the cells inside the battery pack. These cells can cost you around $3 a piece, and in this vacuum there is a total of 6 cells to replace. It is a 6S lithium ion pack in my case, and I immediately went for it. I desoldered the old cells and put in the new ones. Everything went smoothly, but in the end the vacuum didn't work, which was very strange. I took everything apart again and tried to figure out how this thing actually works. On the top of the vacuum is the main motor with its speed controller. Then we have the handle with the trigger switch and the turbo button on top. In the battery compartment lay the cells and the strange BMS board which is sadly over engineered and this is the real reason I'm filming this video today. To make the vacuum work you press the trigger which activates a micro switch which sends a signal to a small microcontroller which then sends a special signal to the BMS board which then activates the MOSFETs and sends power to the speed controller on top which then spins the main motor not complicated at all. In essence, the BMS board is the brain of the whole vacuum and without it you can't do anything. As I figured, this BMS board has to have some kind of a temper protection since it stopped responding after I swapped the cells. The only fix would be to flash it with a new firmware, but since I'm not inside of a Xiaomi factory, this just won't happen. So I was left with a perfectly fine vacuum and a dead battery. I really wanted to fix it and started thinking about how it could be done. I tried powering up the speed controller and to my surprise it worked without sending any signals to it. I just needed to connect my battery voltage to the power wires of the controller and it started spinning the motor, which was awesome. The vacuum does have turbo mode as well, which ups the power, but sadly I couldn't get it working since that did require sending data over the signal wires, but I was totally fine with it. The turbo mode drained the battery too fast, so I didn't use it after all. So the plan to fix the vacuum goes like this. I'm going to rebuild the battery with brand new 18650 cells. Since this motor can draw lots of current, the cells need to be high discharge type, and the cells I'll be using are called Samsung 30Q. They can output around 20 amps of current, which is totally fine, and they come with a capacity of 3000 mAh, which is a bit higher than the original cells inside the vacuum. If you think the added capacity is awesome, you can easily let me know by leaving this video a thumbs up and writing a silly comment about it. The battery I'll be building will be a 6S pack. That means we will have 6 cells connected in series, and whenever we do so, some special electronics is required. It is the BMS, short for Battery Management System. I got this one for less than 3 euros on AliExpress and it makes sure that all cells are always balanced and in a safe voltage range. Don't forget that all of the components I'll be using in this video will be linked down below and if you plan to get something consider using my links because they help me fund future projects without any additional cost to you. The BMS handles charging and comes with plenty of safety features like overcurrent protection, under voltage protection, over voltage protection and much much more. Each battery cell connects to its pad, same as on this picture, and P- and plus pads are then used for charging and discharging the battery. For charging the battery we need a power supply that matches the maximum voltage of our battery pack. One full 18650 lithium ion cell will have a voltage of 4.2 volts and 4.2 multiplied by 6 will give us a maximum battery voltage of 25.2 volts. So 
able to charge the battery, I would need a 25.2 volt power supply. The included charger was very nice, but sadly featured a bit higher voltage and I didn't want to mess around with it. Instead, I got a simple AC to DC brick with output voltage of 25.2 volts and current of 1 amp. It was very easy to find on AliExpress and it costed me only 6 euros. To tell when the battery is charged, there is a small LED indicator on the brick, which is perfect. At this point, we got a new battery and to connect the charger to it, I'll simply use the old battle plug that was used on the old PCB. We can charge the battery, but currently there is no way of discharging it or actually powering up the speed controller and the rest of the vacuum. The micro switch on the trigger board is a basic MOS micro switch and those can handle around 100 milliamps maximum. Since my motor can draw way more than that, I'm going to use a MOSFET. To make it look nicer this time, I also decided to make a small PCB which will easily fit inside the enclosure. On this PCB we have two pads for the input and two for the output. Our battery connects to the input side and our speed controller to the output side. To trigger the board we have two wires and simply connecting these together will activate the MOSFET and the board will start conducting. The cool thing is that this board can now handle more than 50 amps and you can trigger it with any kind of a switch you want. Since these two wires don't draw any current since it's just a signal for the gate pin of the MOSFET. Those are the main parts and besides that I'll use some non-silicon 24 gauge wire, some hitching wrap for the 18650 cells, some protection stickers to avoid shorts and 0.15 mm nickel strip to connect the cells together. As I already said, all of the components will be linked below so if you're looking to get something don't forget to check the description. All of the parts I mentioned can be easily sourced but this small board was designed by me and there's a big chance you won't be able to assemble it yourself. I will leave all of the files available totally for free so if you really wanted to you can but I wanted to show you that it's not complicated at all and the same thing can be assembled using ordinary parts. It is a simple n-channel MOSFET with a few resistors and a diode. The two thinner wires trigger the gate pin on the MOSFET which controls the flow of the current between drain and source. The whole point of this board is to be able to switch high currents with small switches. In the previous video on this channel I reviewed this small hot plate and also assembled this board so if you're interested in seeing that I'll make sure to leave the video link in the description below. And finally time to fix the vacuum. Everything is prepared and planned and I'll start with the battery cells. These are the already mentioned Samsung 30Q cells but they do look a little used since I stole them from my old electric skateboard so I decided to freshen them up a bit. I added these protective stickers and new hitching wraps which will isolate them and make sure that there are no shorts. I will put them in the original plastic slots and at this point this is the time I would usually solder the cells together which is definitely not recommended. Soldering heats them up which is really bad for the cells and the much safer way would be to spot weld them together. I will use 0.15mm nickel strip in a combination with a battery spot welder. K weld is set to 25 joules and I simply put the probes where I want to weld and press the foot pedal to secure the strip to the battery cell. The connections will be done same as on the BMS firing diagram and in the end we will be left with the main minus connection and the main plus connection of the battery pack. After the cells are connected I'll secure the BMS board to the battery with good old hot glue. Now we need to make 7 connections. Battery minus, cell 1, cell 2, cell 3, cell 4, cell 5 and battery plus. For the cell connections I will use the 24 gauge wire and for the main minus and plus I will use thicker 18 gauge wire. The balancing current is really low with this BMS so 24 gauge wires will be more than enough while for the main connections we do need to use thicker wires since these will be handling the full motor power and the BMS is fully wired up. At this point we can try connecting it to a charger or a power supply to see how the battery charges. We can also try to discharge the pack from it and after testing it everything looked fine so I can continue with the rest. I will fit the battery with the BMS inside the plastic shell and you can see that the P pads are facing the left side which is perfect. Now I can secure my MOSFET board with some hot glue and connect the input pad to the P plus and P minus on the BMS. For the battery itself there is only one more thing to connect and it's the charge port. I'll take the old PCB and solder the wires to the charge connector. This thing can now be glued inside the shell and the charge wires can be connected to the P minus and P plus pads as well. The whole battery pack is done and we are left with two thick wires for the speed controller and two thinner wires that will be used to trigger the MOSFET. Taking a closer look at the trigger PCB, I can cut all connections from the actual micro switch and solder my own wires to it. Now I can put it all together and the last connection would be to connect the speed controller power wires to the output of my MOSFET board. After that's done, it's finally time to test it out. 
and as you can see, pressing the trigger activates my MOSFET board and the speed controller spins the motor, which is perfect. Since both charging and discharging works, it's finally time to close it all together. The battery shell was welded together and opening it did require some grinding, so there is no way I'm putting it together like it was out of the box. To close it back together, I will use some T7000 glue and after it's dried, I can slide the battery pack inside the vacuum. The cool thing is that it's covered and the seam lane won't be visible. Only thing left is to screw all of the screws back into their place and the vacuum is fixed. And there it is, the battery mod which saved my vacuum from being thrown away. Even though this fix wasn't 100%, I'm really happy about it. The main feature I'm missing now is the turbo mode, which makes the motor spin faster, but in my experience, this turbo mode would drain the battery ultra fast, so in the end I didn't use it much. The other thing is that there is no more battery LED, which would let you know the battery charge status. To overcome this, I got a power supply brick with a LED indicator, so that should be fine. The main thing I was going with this fix was to make the vacuum fit back inside its wall mounted holder, which it does, and that's just awesome. I tested the vacuum for a couple of days and everything was working right. The battery now lasts a little bit longer than out of the box and to charge it it takes around 3 hours since the battery is 3 amp hours and the charger output is 1 amp. The datasheet of these cells say that this can be charged a lot faster, so in the end if I decide to go for it, I can easily upgrade the charger to make the batteries charge faster. And that's it, I'm really happy how this turned out and I'm really happy that I finally got the time to fix the vacuum. These kinds of videos are really interesting to make and I really hope you enjoyed watching it. If you did, let me know down below and don't forget to leave this video a like. If you want to see more similar content, take a look at some of my other videos and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next one.